Hey awesome. there, Peter. Thank you for having me, guys. Uh, hey, how's How you doing, guys? Peter? Um, before I start, I'm doing amazing. Life is great. Um, before great. I start, I just want to say... Uh, uh, all right, can you turn your volume up a little bit? I, I'm having a hard time hearing oh, you. Much. Oh, hi. Can you guys hear me now? Yep. It's a little better, oh, but uh, if you can if you can speak, like get right, you can, like grab your phone and just go. Hey, how's it going? Like like you're hanging out <laughs> with it or something. <laughs> okay, you got it. You got it. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for Ethan for always having me in mind, and uh, he's an amazing, wonderful person, and uh, God bless your family. Oh, well, we appreciate but, um, that. Okay, yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Um, so, sure, UFOs and aliens. Um, I kind of have like a different uh perspective when it comes to them than uh, most people um i believe that ufos and aliens um well for, first off i think alien aliens is basically satan himself with the fallen angels what um, makes you think that the same fallen um the same fallen angels that that scriptures talked about especially the book of enoch um the reason why I think that is because, good question, is because um, uh, apparently they have technology way more advanced than what we think, than what we see in a normal modern day life. Like wouldn't they, they have, have to? Um, in order to traverse that vast distances, they would have to, wouldn't they? Yeah, exactly. So then another thing about UFOs and aliens as well. I don't think they come from other planets or galaxies or very far away. I believe that they are built here on Earth. Um, we have all the resources, all the elements, all the exotic metals that it is that to make them. Well, throughout our solar system. We don't know so, how to put them sure. together. Sure. That's a interesting perspective yeah. on that. Uh, so do you, when it comes to other other uh, universe or other areas of the universe, uh, do you believe that there's life out in the universe that's that's different than the than the satanic aliens, or do you just <laughs> not believe there's life out there at all? Um, I kind of believe that we're trapped in this earth. Um, it's a it's a, a closed huh? um, ecosystem. Um, but we've been to the moon. I, I believe so we're not that. Trapped, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't believe that there's other galaxies or planets or none of that stuff. I The stars that we see when we look up are just light. Um, they're not, they're not um, land masses or anything. But um, uh, why would so, you think like that? Like I said, um, there could, excuse me? Do you, do, or have you ever um, looked through like a telescope or something like that? I have, I have. And have you not seen the planets through the telescope? Like like Saturn, especially. That's a beautiful um, planet. It's got the rings around it and stuff like that. Very no. unique looking though. It's very it's got very distinct. Actually, all the gas giants have rings, but Saturn's are the most vis uh, vi visible. Yeah, so, of course. I, I've seen them, but what's to say that they're actual the land? Kind of like the moon, like the moon we see the moon. Mm -hmm. But um but what's been to there. say that it's not just uh plasma? We've been there and walked on we, it. We know the moon's made of, of rock. Uh, I thought it was cheese, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> have you tasted it? It might be. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because, so, um, is the moon landing not real? Or is example, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess I, I should I probably ask that. The moon because it's a, to me, it's a hoax. A lot of things okay. just don't add up. Like the foot. Like the like footprints what? that they left, like on on the legend um, mm -hmm. moon, like they they don't match the same space boots that like the astronauts were wearing. Um, <laughs> they well, actually uh, caught the wait the, wait. The, how, how do you the, know that the landing? How do you oh, know they don't match? They uh they photographed the they photographed the footprints and then they mm -hmm. they showed the space suits and they were completely different from the bottom, like the sole right. of the feet. And you're sure that and, you've um, seen the correct photographs? Or just something somebody set up to make I it mean, look like a hoax. Yeah, I mean it could it could um well I mean it's 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 far beyond just the footprints. Um also how like um the red hot chili peppers, how they have the song where it goes like space may be the finer frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. And like Yeah, they're talking about like, science fiction. These movies, are super though, rich, yeah. powerful people. 
talking about Star Wars specifically, I believe. Yes, they are actually. Yeah. Or maybe, well, I guess they could have been talking about Star Trek since they said Final Frontier, but yeah, whatever. They're talking about science fiction, right? Are you so you think they're talking about the Chili Peppers are like, are they part of the cabal? Like that keeps a secret. Are they? Are they? Are they leaking it? Dude, they, is it oh. Well, the the thing about the elites is that sometimes, like they they like to give us um, clues or or hidden messages, like subliminal Easter messages eggs. and stuff. So it, it could be part of that. Yeah, Easter eggs, exactly. Okay, so. But, let's let's get back to the aliens though, because we we've we've went we've went a full circle around just kind of get we're, we're, we we know where your headspace is now though, so we know yeah, that kinda, we know yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of what your your uh, but anyway go to so aliens are demons uh, go yeah aliens are demons because um the thing about um about them is that there's nothing nothing good about them the the um the abduction people are terrified about them it's nothing nice and holy about them it's always it's always terror holy. like and that's what demons do they demonize people okay. and okay. so and these demons are the same fallen angels that are spoken in um in the book of enoch how there was yeah, there was the devil that. that felt like lightning and his helpers which are the fallen angels and those are the same Angel, the top man, how to do things like how to cast swords for war, how to how to um, how what drugs to do and stuff like that. What drugs to do? Oh wow! Um, so you're under the, the of the mind that all aliens are like malevolent. Then all alien encounters are malevolent. A lot of people have more benign uh, or even benevolent uh, experiences with. With, with what they claim is an abduction experience, which I, yeah. uh, personally I think is you know some maybe some sleep paralysis and uh, yeah. or paralysis and, and things like of that nature, but they have a pleasant experience, uh, often uh, comparable to the experience people claim to have when they when they experience a near death experience and they and they, they feel like they're with loved ones or with angels. They have a, a experience like that, except for with the alien beings. So is that is that uh, the same demons that are terrorizing people. By the um, way, so Bree, I, oh, I believe sorry. that there could be. Go ahead, Peter. Sorry. Oh, um, so I believe that there's demons and angels. Maybe when they have those uh, nice experiences, it could be actually real angels, like angels, angels, not demons. You but do people realize getting confused as aliens. I'm I'm not sure if you're if you're aware, but they are actually able to reproduce these experiences in a lab setting of having these experiences like there's someone in the room with you or you're you know, someone sitting on your chest or or you have like you can hear voices. They can re they can reproduce all of these things in a lab setting by tapping into certain places of your brain where these things actually do come from. And by so many ways, by the by lighting, by infrasound, mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. by just these subtle differences and changes in your environment, they can induce. Oh yeah, like the sound soundless chamber or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, deprivation chambers are a good yeah. example of uh, yeah. of you know that type of research. But you can you can really change the way that the especially when you put someone into a deep sleep and then you and then you engage them with all these different. Uh, different techniques to alter their brain state. It's really quite fascinating. So, right. yeah. Um, so when we, uh, when we talk about aliens, are you, are you talking about like the, the, the gray aliens with the big black eyes? Is that, are those the demons? Cause there's, there's more, those are the most common in, in pop culture. But if you get into some of the UFO culture, you'll see that there's a lot of a variety of, of uh, a menagerie, if you will, of alien creatures uh, that are alleged to visit and interact with humankind. So is it just one or are they all, all of them, malevolent demons? Um, that is correct, because then there's the greys, there's the reptilians, and there's other ones. I'm, I'm not so sure which ones specifically they could all, all exist. I'm not so sure. I'm, I don't know how the fallen angels look. That would just be like a guess, if I were to say. So, okay. um, Peter, yeah, I kind of, I, I, 
I kind of want to know why you believe this stuff. Like what convinced you that this is actually the case? Um, well, like tell, tell me, try to well, convince me to, that this yeah. is the case. Sure. Cause, um, when I started reading scriptures, mainly the book of Enoch how it says that there's fallen angels, they got to look some type of way. And then when you, when you, when you make, when you, when you, um, mix up what's going on, what are people seeing, seeing aliens and these creatures, Sometimes I put one and two together. Oh, so in ancient times, there's the fallen angels, and in modern times, they're being called aliens. So I kind of put them two together because the fallen angels just have, like, heavenly wisdom because they taught man how to do things. Because, um, for example, humans are born without any knowledge. Like, if you, if you have a newborn <laughs> and you don't teach him how to read, how to write, uh, how to talk, how to do anything, he'll just he'll be a grown-up without not knowing anything. Actually, so humans how is are... it that, that humans are are able to build technology and cell phones and stuff like that. It must be coming from a different type of source, not a human source. What were you going to say about the, about the humans, Neil? I heard you get ready. Well, well, humans are actually born with some innate knowledge. Like we're born with some things that we, it's just, it's, it's, I guess through genes, through years and years of evolution and humans, um, having some innate knowledge by the time they're born, like how to, you know, breathe. And there, there is a point though, where you get to, where you can't, where you're, you lose your ability to ever be able to learn language. I believe. When sure. Yeah. Yep. Like yep. it's yep. like yep. 12 or so. Something like that. And it's much yeah. easier to learn when you're earlier. Yeah. Uh, when you're, when you're younger, I mean, because you, you can, but anyway, that's not really what I'm going about here. Um, I, uh, Peter, I'm not sure if you're aware, but, um, demons and stuff was usually the culprits for those nighttime visits like we hear about with the alien abductions back in the day and then we had things like especially during the victorian ages you heard about succubuses and incubuses and stuff that would come and sit on your chest so you couldn't the breathe, hag. right or the hag right there's all kinds right. of little mythologies all over the globe about these beings that would visit you in the night and they have all sorts of different descriptions and because of modern day and modern culture they're now aliens so we have alien visitations uh i don't know if i would just because these have been going on throughout history i don't know if i would there's an expression correlation is not always causation sort of thing like you know you don't you don't always have to make that link i i personally believe that there are other species out there for sure somewhere who knows but uh, the likelihood is there. But I don't think they're from here, to be honest. But uh, um, and I really, I, I find I, I, I'm still, and I used to be very convinced that of UFOs and stuff like that. I was an avid Art Bell listener. I've never been into the scriptures because, for me personally, they're mythologies, just like every other scripture that's ever been out there that we no longer accept as being real. Um, but um, so for me, it's just, it doesn't work. Like it, it, you, you're going to have to, I don't know, try maybe a different avenue to try and convince me of this because I, I, I can't take anything in the, especially in the scriptures as being worthwhile accepting because we can debunk a crap load of stuff out of there. So I, I got to agree with Neil there. I, when it comes to that, to any of the major religious texts, uh, that's not, that's not going to be something I'm going to find compelling, uh, yeah, mostly because the other yeah, because the true. other ones exist that that are that are people making the same claims about them and so it kind of makes it hard to take any right. one of them seriously so is there anything extra biblical that we should look to in our reality that would convince us that this that these aliens are demonic um well another belief that i have about why um the government and the media is pushing ufos because so if you compare um, the media exposure to UFOs now to how it was like maybe 10 years ago, they're trying to be they're trying to keep a secret. But now it's like they're so open about it. Um, the reason why they're trying to push, I believe, um, UFOs and aliens and the space agenda so much is because, like I said, the devil is basically the alien and his helpers with the fallen angels. And the reason why they want people to believe in space and in aliens and, and in UFOs is so that they could bring him about as like the new Antichrist, the new ruler of the world. Oh, that, okay. People believe that aliens are going to come like in, at peace or like at whatever, and then they're just going to accept them. So they're just going to accept, they're going to accept aliens, which is gonna, mm -hmm. basically saying they're going to accept the devil. 
Well, I will say that humans are very susceptible to the notion of a, of a uh, external overarching power that's watching them and wants and controls them and wants them to perform certain uh, acts. So I, I don't think that that's a difficult, uh, difficult concept to, uh, to apply elsewhere, but the, the media being the, the source is, I just don't see, I don't see the gain there. I don't see uh, a, being able to keep a lid on something like that with the, no, you couldn't, there's no way you could. What do, I mean? So what's what, how do how do you work that? How do you work that out? Um, and, uh, the aliens have been, I, I remember, have been in our culture. Oh, oh yeah. sorry, uh, just quickly, aliens have been in uh, our culture since the fifties, forties even. So, War of the Worlds was one of the first radio uh, plays ever, right? Yeah, the Foo Fighters of uh, World War Two. <laughs> yeah, not the band, the little flying lights, but the band rocks too. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So so we so can we agree that UFOs and aliens are real or what what's your take on that? So UFOs are things that we don't know what they are. They're unidentified flying objects and I'm definitely on board with that. Uh a bird could be a UFO if you don't know what it is. <laughs> they actually prefer the term UAV, uh, unidentified aerial uh or UAP, sorry, unidentified aerial phenomenon. Is what they prefer now mm -hmm. over UFO. Because many of these so-called UFOs turned out to be um, uh, just military experimental craft. So, yeah. Do I um, believe that there are aliens out there? Probably, but are they visiting us? Why? If they have that kind of technology, uh, uh, imagine you were imagine being us and and like a, a colony of ants. <laughs> like, do we really pay attention to the ants unless, of course, they get in and start eating all our food? But let's let's. I mean, an alien <laughs> civilization. Um, we would be. We can't even. We we we. We're just going into our solar system now, which I know you don't really believe, but we uh, we are. We're going into our solar system. We've had probes out that have actually left our solar system, and one of them's even in inter, almost in uh, intergalactic space now. So, um, think of a, a, a civilization that has that kind of technology that can traverse those kinds of distances to come here and to actually engage with us, they would most likely have to be benevolent because I'm not sure if you're familiar with the um, uh, names not coming to me, but are you familiar with Dr. Michio Kaku by any chance? He's a theoretical oh, yeah. I, I used to believe in him. He's like this Asian guy him. with like Why? long white hair. Yeah. He's a, yeah. he's a theoretical physicist. You don't have to believe in him. He's, he's, his ideas are, are great, I think. I think he's got a lot of cool futuristic ideas. But he, a type, he, that would have to be like a, a type 2 or better civilization that can go. And uh, if you hit that point, you've gotten past the point where you're like us. Everyone wants to kill each other here. We have, we, we, before we could become a type 1 civilization, we'll probably blow ourselves up. But if you make it past that point, then you're most likely it's going to be a benevolent contact. These are going to be you know, people that want to teach other spacefaring um, uh, people or, or beings, we'll say, uh, about their technology and probably, who knows, could end up joining like the Federation from Star Trek. You never know. But uh, I, I find it highly unlikely that any of those have been here thus far based on just like, look at us, man. Look at us. If you were a super advanced species, mm -hmm. would you come by here and go, oh, hey, oh, fuck that. I'm out of here. <laughs> just keep going, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right I, mean, Peter, uh, uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna probably wrap the call because we've got a few a uh, few people waiting on the lines now uh to get through but i do want to let you have uh the last word if you'd like it yeah. yeah um sure yeah um so i i just when when you mentioned that physicist uh mm -hmm. mitch yokaku mm -hmm. i'm probably like slaughtered his name i'm sorry um no you got it you got it but i i i used to believe i used to believe in him um <laughs> up until like it was like he used to come out in like in the news a lot like in the science yep. channel yep. and then he his claim was that in 2012 there was going to be like a giant solar flare that it was happening for sure that it was going to like like we did get a flare in, like, in 2012 prior, prior satellites and that's the reason why 2012 was going to be the end of the world because of this solar flare but then Wait, it never he happened believed this or was this something that he'd heard 
anyways, I shouldn't keep um, going. I think it was. It's, it's okay. Um, I mean, I believed it because it was like he's like a professional coming out in media and he's claiming it, and they wouldn't just allow anybody to to give such a such a claim, you know. So I was young and I was like, "Whoa, look at this professional on TV." Um, he's saying that there's going to be a solar flare. It's going to be so strong that it could wipe out the whole earth. But then after after 2012, nothing happened. And he just disappeared from TV. Like, he just never showed up again. So I was like, oh, that's when I started catching on to, like, all this fear propaganda that was going on. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, all right, thank well, you for calling us pleasure. tonight. Thank you guys so much. I recommend you listen yeah, to some of his so audio much. books, Peter, if you can. Check it out. I will, oh, right. I will, I'm, I'm always uh, doing research and stuff. Good for you, man. That's good to hear. You got it, guys. It's a pleasure. Have a good day, guys. Thank you for having Take care. me. No. All right. Bye-bye. Take care, guys. Bye. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you get pulled into the conversation, though. They, you know, it, 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 they, so many different directions to go. There was so much that we could have explored oh, yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, I do want to thank Jason from Dragons and Genesis for uh, his awesome uh, super chat. Neil and Bree, you are amazing host. Keep doing the Lord's work. <laughs> thank you. I, I like the four ninety nine. What's the matter? Jason couldn't flip that extra penny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bugging it, brother. I'm bugging it. All right. Uh,